Good day, Terrarians. Purple Mentat here with episode 11 of my Calamity solo series, using a variety of other mods as well. You can find an updated mod pack in the description below. Today, we're going to kill some crimson bosses, because I discovered that we can make crimstone blocks directly out of ebonstone blocks. There's a couple of different options for doing so. Here we are. The crimstone from ebonstone requires the Tinkerer's Workshop, and I believe, judging by where it is in the list, is either a part of IMK Sushi's or is a part of Lambity. Could be either. Not certain. However... As things are currently, we now have this pl little platform area set up such that we can change it from Crimson to Corruption and back simply by moving one block. Gotta love it. I grabbed five of the gory spine and five of the bloody worm food from the vendor who sells those things. Argo's mutant, as it uh, as it happens. Uh, Polly the mutant, in this case. But that's just my world. It differs by world. Like all NPCs. And let me just uh, throw away some stuff. Let me just put down an eater soul spanner. I clearly don't need another one right now. And we can start killing some bosses. Okay. I honestly don't expect to have any troubles. Given that I just got done killing like 15 of the Eater of Worlds. With the Brain of Cthulhu. Hey, good. It worked. And the brain is already half dead, just because my summons are ridiculous. And down he goes. <laughs> wow. I mean, I expected to not have trouble, but that was, that was something else. Ooh, we got the trophy. We can make the mind break. Neat. It's another summon damage one, and a high one at that. So that's cool. Yeah, clearly I'm going to have no issues farming the Brain of Cthulhu in whatever quantities I desire. Hey, maybe I should actually, like, use buffs this time just so that I'm not completely disrespecting the bosses. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. And time to call again. All right. Brain of Confusion. Now we have what we need to make the uh, amalgamated brain. However, we could we already made a Brain of Confusion out of one of the many, many worm scarfs that I got. And again, I think that's an IMK Sushi thing. So I'm not going to worry. Of, well, you know what? Yeah, I don't care. We're going to make the amalgamated brain and it's going to be good. So um, these are just going to get sold. And then we get, what, Crimtain Ore and Tissue Samples. Tissue Samples being used to make the Crimson Gear. It's basically the Shadow Scale. You can also trade your Shadow Scales and Tissue Samples back and forth. Easy stuff. Alright, on to the Perforator Hive. Oh! There we go. Now my summons are on it. Oop, oop, and the perforators are going. Oh, it can't handle it. So much slowdown. Herp! <laughs> wow! That was, uh... <laughs> that was a bit much. 
there's a reason that the vanilla um, summons don't jump right on top of things like that. I forgot to buff. I pulled the potions out of my bag and never actually used them. So yeah, there you go. About as uh, difficult as expected. That is zero difficulty. I've still got random bits of Demonite and Shadow Scale from the last time I fought a uh, um, Eater of Worlds. And we got our Perforator Mask. And a whole bunch of stuff. I should have not done that. Here. Start putting things away. And that'll get me the inventory space I need to actually pick things up. Alright, so we got blood samples. That's cool. Those are the item used to make the various perforator craftables, including the vein buster, the sausage maker, <laughs> the eviscerator, snail speed. Wow. The bloody rupture, the blood clot, and the blood bath. Basically, I'm pretty sure they all work about the same at, uh, what, what do you, what ammo do you even use? Eh, we'll figure it out so, at some point. Like, the bloody rupture is another stab, 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 releases homing blood orbs. Blood clot staff summons a blood clot to fight for you, which is probably almost identical to, yeah. Yeah, it's basically just a different dank summon. Works practically the same, I assume. And then we get tooth balls. The unpleasant aorta is our yo-yo. Really, the big purpose of this was to get the bloody worm tooth, which we can combine with the worm scarf. To make the bloody worm scarf. Actually, 15% increased damage reduction and increased melee stats. I'm not sure I want that. Like, it's less damage reduction, and the whole point of the worm scarf for me right now is the damage reduction, because I'm not doing the melee thing. Anyway, that's, uh. <laughs> That's it for the Crimson bosses. I'm going to head over towards the dungeon now. We know it's over here, but I haven't actually found it yet. First, I'm going to take a stop home and sell some stuff off, deposit some things. And then we're going to go poke our head in at Skeletron. Oh, here, let's see what that uh, Brain of Cthulhu trophy can do for us. Uh, oh. hang on. Let me put the trophy in there. It's the mind break is what I'm looking for. Okay. Mind break. What? It, it actually functions as a normal summon? Yeah. Wow, that's significantly better than the Eater of Worlds staff. Oh, I see. It takes up two minion slots, but look at the damage on it. All right, let's go see what this guy can do against some random zombies. Here, I'll even take off my other minions just so it's only him. Well, I guess slimes, really. Okay. Alright, yeah. I see the, uh, right off there. It's good, but I think that two of these dank minions are gonna be better. I mean, just watch these guys work. If I ever run into an enemy... There we go. Yeah, they just... They are amazing. They, they get right on top of things, and they stay there, and they have... They, they do a, enough damage. These are going to be better for me. Look at that. Just... 
the way they eviscerate the um, Eater of Worlds is just insane, too. Um, let's see. Already got a brain of confusion. So let's sell you. You are not a material? Nope. So, Bloodbath is a the same idea as the uh, um, Shadow Drop. So, that goes. All from shards go. Blood Clot is, it is a material for the Occultist's Essence. I do need both this and the Dank Staff. That's the main reason that I got into this was because the there are some things that use both the crimson and the other side of things. Like the Carnage Ray. Oh no, that's for the Terror Ray. Okay. Yeah, I'm not gonna worry about it. Alright, I'll meet you over at the dungeon. Alrighty, we found the dungeon easily enough. As the old man will tell you, we cannot fight his master Skeletron until later. So, we shall have to wait for nightfall either way. Plus, the area could use some improvements before we actually fight the boss. So, I'm going to remodel the entrance to the dungeon into a, an arena. Probably using the dungeon brick that I'm mining up right now because this pickaxe is amazing and cuts through things quite qu quickly. My plan is to level things down to the actual level of the entrance for about a screen in either direction and then set up a, a arena full of platforms to deal with the boss because I don't anticipate a whole lot of problems with Skeletron, even with Revengeance Mode, with the way that I've been chewing through the rest of the bosses now that I have this Dank Staff and this Corruption Gear. However, maybe he'll surprise me. We'll find out. One thing is certain. When I am in the dungeon, I'm going to need to unload my inventory more than once, and that's quite the run to do so. Luckily, the meteor that we saw spawn is right next to the dungeon. Right there. See all that meteorite? I have tossed a house down. The Dryad's currently there. Oh, huh, interesting. It remembered the dry, uh, that that's the Dryad's home after the Dryad died horribly to meteor heads. And we're going to make use of the magic storage mod now to create ourselves a remote access so that we can access our inventory, our greater uh, storage inventory, from way out there. So what do we need? We need the locator. One of them. Thank you. Uses five amber. If you're short on amber, you can either mine, it, mine up hard fossils, sturdy fossils, in the uh, underground desert and use that to extractinate and hope to get a bunch of amber or you can buy it from the jeweler if you're using the alchemy npc mod uh, that's what i'm thinking wow you'd think i should like start scripting these things or something but i think you guys like me failing the way everybody does so remote storage access you will use up three of our shadow diamonds uh, uh one of our storage components and seven of our rubies to get. Now, I'm also going to make a storage crafting interface because I don't know if this is possible, but it would be great if I... Oop. Can I do it like that? No. Will it use up the shadow diamonds first? No. Last. I'm hoping that I can use this to right-click the storage chart. Locator successfully set. Right-click storage a remote access to set the remote access. I'm hoping that I can make use of the crafting interface from way the heck out here as well. We're gonna find out though. You 
go there. Locator goes there. And now I can access. Fantastic. So let's see if I can smack the storage interface next to that. Yes, actually, that worked out just fine. Fantastic. I need to actually put the crafting stations in here, but I have access to my full supply of everything. Excellent. Huh. Forge requires torches that I don't have in there, right? Yeah. Anyway, uh, first things first, I need to get rid of this meteorite because the um, dryad is going to have problems otherwise. And since I'm way out here and not easily able to access my alchemy NPCs short of shuffling them around and waiting for night again, my best bet is actually to brew some potions. I know, weird, right? Didn't think we'd be doing that anymore. But to there's an obsidian skin potion that I don't have the ingredients in there for because I decided it would be a good idea to free up space by getting rid of my herbs because I was going to buy all of my potions moving on. Right. Well, we can do it without it. Um, what we can do is we can make an obsidian skin Goal. This requires a furnace, so let me get that furnace made, and put in- oh, I already had a whole bunch of them. Whoops. And the obsidian skull will give me immunity to fire blocks. That's more important to me than the uh, stress pills at the moment, because these meteorite, if you don't have something like the obsidian skull equipped, will burn you, and you go through hit points pretty darn quick. It's a problem. So you're going to want something like that equipped. You can also, if you've managed to get your hands on some, or if you've crafted some water walking boots, you can make use of the obsidian waders, I think they're called, which are made with the skull and those water walking boots. You can also, there's a couple of other obsidian type items that you can make. For example, I think you can make an obsidian shield with the use of a cobalt shield, but the cobalt shield requires you to have actually gotten into the dungeon or gotten into hard mode to get your hands on. So, not ideal. The meteor heads are the only enemy that will spawn in this meteor biome. The meteor biome exists as long as there's at least, I believe, 50 meteorite ore around, and you can go ahead and make your own meteor biome. The meteor heads have a small chance of dropping meteorite, so you only ever need one, but the, the chance is one meteor, that is, to be able to make everything, but the chance is really small. You're probably going to be happier if you summon up more with the meteor potions or otherwise mine your meteorite when you find yourself running low. Now, the meteorite is very useful if you're planning on magic main, for this portion of the game because let me show you meteorite is used to make oh hang on change you back to all used to make your meteor meteorite bars and those can be used to make either phase blades which are 22 damage uh I don't remember if they are auto-swing naturally, but basically little lightsaber. These pale in comparison to the weaponry available from the Calamity mod, so you probably don't want to bother with those. You can make a ham axe, but we already have a better ham axe. Again, the Calamity mod seems to operate on its own scale rather than the vanilla scale. And most importantly though, the space gun is actually useful. The star cannon uses fallen stars as your ammo, so not so useful, but the space gun's great because it's very low mana cost, fairly high magic damage, and like while the shadow drop stuff is fantastic uh, when you're out in the open, you're not always out in the open. Also, the meteor suit gives you 21% increased magic damage. And I don't actually remember what the uh, set bonus is, but it's more magic -y goodness. Meteor Staff. Oh, that's hard mode. Drill Containment Unit. That's hard mode. Deific Amulet. Still don't know where this Stardust comes from. I assume it's a drop from one of the... Ooh, 
Comet Shard. Permanently increases maximum mana by 50. Uses Stardust. Interesting. So that's probably a hard mode boss that we're waiting to find. Burnt Sienna from the Calamity mod. Hey, here you go. This is Ash, Obsidian, Amber, and Meteorite bars. So you'll need a little bit of Underworld stuff. Causes enemies to erupt into healing projectiles on death. That's kind of neat. Comet Quasher. Uses 5 ectoplasm, so that's hard mode dungeon stuff. Uh, summons a swarm of meteors from the sky on enemy hits. That sounds amazing. 126 melee damage. Wow. Devastation. I love looking at some of the stuff that we'll have available later. Ah, here we go. Meteor Fist. Extra 4% uh, critical strike chance. Oh, no, no. This is an actual weapon. 15 melee damage. So this is like your... Uh, um, Thogonox or something like that, but early on. Primordial Earth uses Forbidden Fragments, yeah. Meteorite Potion, so that's what happened to the dinosaurs. That lets you call them down. So yeah, so you get some extra options, but mostly it's for those who want to do the prime, uh, most of their damage with magic damage. And while class doesn't mean nearly as much now, as soon as we get done with the Wall of Flesh, it's going to extend the importance of what class you are. I do love how um, well these guys just destroy anything that's nearby. It's pretty great. Alright, I'm going to finish building and then we're going to try fighting Skeletron. Alrighty, it is nighttime and we've got our arena complete. So, time to buff up and try it on. Yep, gotta kill the hands first, that's right. Really not looking like it's gonna be an issue, though. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, that's an issue. Well, the hands are dead anyway. So, we're gonna shadow drop staff it, and once he starts charging again, we need to be moving immediately. Time's up. That's okay. We got this. Yeah, Skeletron, no problem, thanks to the dank staff. And the, uh... There we are. Whew! The, uh, top there protecting us from... Ooh, blighted sludge spreads throughout the world's evil. Interesting. Uh, the top there stopping his homing skulls. So, what can we do with the Skeleton Trophy? We can make the Bone Zone. Neat. We got our Shadow Diamond. That was a, uh, distinctly less, uh, terrifying than my first time trying Skeletron on Expert Mode, but I've also gone heavy on prep this time around. Godly Bone Glove. Throwing damage. Do I need? I need bones. Cute. Okay. And the Book of Skulls. Oh, I thought those reflected. Oh well. I'm not expecting the uh, vanilla items to be super exciting compared to what we can get out of um, Calamity. So we're going to call this an episode and start next time with exploring the dungeon. Um, there was a lot of off-camera work leveling this area out and getting it all set but i mean they're like it's very simple build um one thing important thing of note leave the walls i don't know if that's still an issue but i know that if you did not leave the walls in uh the last time i played you could end up preventing yourself from being able to progress at endgame because the lunatic cultists would not appear so you wouldn't be able to fight the Moon Lord and such. Alrighty, thank you very much for joining me, folks. Hope you've enjoyed today's episode. If so, leave me a thumbs up. Tell me what you liked. If not, leave me a thumbs down. Tell me what you'd like to see me do better. Either way, you want to see more of this, please subscribe. And I'll see you next time. I wonder what I can make with these. Slinger's Essence. Neat.